working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're going to create a vector around the frame. So I'm going to press V on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not letting go of it. And I'm going to zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm going to hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up, and complete that task. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter, so I'm just going to make it red, just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm going to do now is make the image at 100%, and actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just going to make a selection around the snowboarder. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool. And I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag. And we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. You notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously not going to be part of the selection. I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Order. I'm going to select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm going to do now is click on this top layer Hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated so that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Ctrl and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go to window, properties. Click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So you can keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush select, I know I'm selecting some of the sky but that's okay. I'm going to get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm going to paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. I'm going to edit, fill to bring up the fill menu. Under contents, choose content aware and press OK. And Photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the shovel disappear. I'm going to press Ctrl D, Command D in the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're going to work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm going to go into the Channels panel. And I'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel. And drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. And notice now that the floor is 
it's no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the Move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, Transform, close. And now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose flip horizontal. And from here I can match the scene a little bit better and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen, then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use a bracket piece in the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint it black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel. And, I'm gonna, and this one is that with the final image, I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often I do a search for that hashtag and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Press Ctrl D, Command D in the Mac to deselect. And this is what we're going to work with. The first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground. So I'm going to go into the channels panel. And I'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast. In this case, the blue channel. I'm going to click and drag on the blue channel. And drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it. Now with the duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we got to work on the spot part. A feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm going to go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow. So like black as my foreground color, so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. Again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And then we can see, and there's our file. It's a really big.
big layer. So we're gonna need to scale it down. Control T, command can connect, transform. We can't see the corner handles. So I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero on the Mac. There's the corner handles. And now I'm gonna adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm gonna right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. And from here I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose Distort just to get a better perspective of scenes that we're working with, maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit the screen, then I'm going to press the V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard, paint with black, and maybe shape you know, a little bit better. So maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the library panel, and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with. I'm going to paste it here, Control V, Command D on the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm going to change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear, and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case, just now. Then I'm going to press Control T, Command D to transform, Control Zero, Command Zero for bird's eye view. And I'm going to scale this element down. I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 again. Zoom back in. And I'm going to just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm going to flip it horizontally. So right click on it, flip horizontally. And keep rotating it. Maybe something. Something like this. And I, I can you know, scale it more if I need to or rotate it more. Whatever the distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform. That's command in the Mac. Control zero. Command zero on the Mac. And scale this one in well and I'm gonna zoom in and rotate this one into position maybe right about here or so but I want this one to be in the back so I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here and I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position so maybe something like this and actually I just realized that I made a mistake notice how this element gets cut off right in this area, that's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popped up. I'll click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow. So there's a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. 
notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadows. So the shadows would be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm going to do now is right above this duplicate channel, I can start making adjustments to it. The first thing I'm going to do is fill with white um, the areas that I want to keep for sure. So with the lasso tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection of the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what Apply Image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here in the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here and maybe drag this one to the left as well and press OK. Now, what I'm gonna do now is click on the brush tool black as my foreground color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard and I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And I'm just painting these pixels away which represent floor. And once again, I'm going to go into image, adjustment, levels, and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit. And press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Ctrl, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it. Go back into the layers panel on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document. I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon. And notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the Move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer. So we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T on the Mac, Transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on the corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose Clip Horizontal. And from here, I can match scene a little bit better and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard. Right click, hit the screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white and bringing in some of that snow. And 
And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the libraries panel and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press Control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working for. And actually, let me drag this layer up a little more time, placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTN. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm gonna click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now it's not a perfect selection, but it's gonna work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're gonna other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're gonna need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, to transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero in the back. There's the corner handles, and now I'm gonna adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little better, and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose Distort, just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press the V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket piece on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. So maybe something like that. What we're going to do now is work with different elements. So I'm going to open up the library panel and I'm going to open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. Things I need to do for it to work so maybe something like that so I just press enter to accept that transformation and I'm going to use one more element I'm going to use this one right down here again control c to copy and paste that in here change the blend mode to screen control t to transform that's command to the mac control zero command zero on the mac and scale this one in as well Rotate this one into position, maybe right about 
here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press it. And actually I just realized it is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, then upload it to Instagram and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here on the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm going to go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark valley to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're going to be making a selection. Anything that's white in this screen will be selected. Anything that is black will be deselected. So I'm going to drag this one over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, color so I can paint with black. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by clicking on the right bracket key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to paint with black. And again, you don't have to be very accurate. As long as you get close enough, it should be good. And then painting these pixels away, which represent floor. And once again, I'm going to go into image, adjustment, levels darker pixels and brighten up the mid-tones a little bit and press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Ctrl, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it, go back into the layers panel, on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the Move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, and then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T on the Mac, Transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right-click on it and choose Clip Horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little better, and I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right-click on it and choose Distort, just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with, maybe something like this. And press enter when you're done. 